the biggest misconception about me is that I'm interesting. Uh, I mean, I, I think it depends. I mean, if you're into reading books and playing video games and, you know, watching movies, then I'm fucking super cool. But, you know. I tend to like the small films, just about everyday shit. And I actually had this, this conversation with somebody yes, yesterday, a few days ago, about, um, uh, I think I got in a fight with somebody because the, the year that, I think it was The Dark Knight came out, uh, also, Rachel Getting Married came out, and I think I, I I I think Rachel Getting Married was my favorite movie of the year, and 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 yeah, and somebody's like, how could you like that movie when Dark Knight came out? My point being that I I think I like movies and stories. I guess this is how I'll relate it to music, but like stories about real shit and just things that happen to people, and being able to relate to that, like oh. I, I, I know this person and I know why they're doing this and I know what this is about and this is like real life to me. Um, and so in terms of that, I think I gravitate toward music that does the same thing. I think this might not make any sense, but um, like John K. Sampson of The Weaker Lands, I think writes songs in that way where it's, it's, this, very, it's this very specific feeling, but in a in a unique way that you've never really heard before, but you can instantaneously like relate to it, or like even Ben Folds, I think is the same way. In a totally bonkers way, I think Tom Waits as well. Um, I think when you get to the meat of it, the stories are very. I don't want to use the word small, but they're very specific. They're very um, self-contained, but in this world of in this like chaotic shell. I'm going to use my, my favorite quote from Tom Waits is that all anybody does is imitate their favorite artists badly. And I think that that's, that's true. I think everybody hopes that what they're doing is different and unique. But um, I, I think that having a multitude of uh, influences to draw upon is going to help you be more of that because you're gonna imitate, you know, if all you did was imitate this one artist, you're gonna sound like a shitty version of that artist. But if you imitate 1,000 artists at once, chances are you're going to come up with something a little different. I mean, the way that I write songs, or the way that songs get written, usually it's the music comes first, then a melody occurs, then I just kind of sing nonsense until something is misheard by someone else or I say a phrase and I get stuck on it and I'm like, what does this mean? And then I kind of investigate that theme or that whatever that story is that I think it's in my head and then I figure it out. I love it when like Josh or Matt or somebody like comes up with an idea for a song and they're like, here, here's some music. I usually instantaneously can come up with a melody and then it's like fitting the words in is the hard part, but the melody comes quickly to me, usually. And if it doesn't, then it usually never, it usually never gets there. But, um, so I think that's the one thing I'm good at is coming up with melodies quickly. I don't know how they come, they just happen. I think it would be interesting, I mean, it would be nice to know something about music theory and how music works, because I think everything I do is just based off of, you know, like I just feel it out. Um, so I think, I don't know. I mean, it's it's tough. I've been trying to teach myself how to play piano for the last year or so, off and on, and it's very hard to do. I can play some of the easy Ben Folds five songs slowly, <laughs> um, but that's about it. Uh, but yeah, because I think if I understood the piano and how the keys, like, and how everything relates to one another, I think I could understand music a little better. Um, I don't know that I need to, but I just think it would be it would be good to be able to communicate with other people in that way that they can communicate. I mean, I think I've maybe been asked five or six times to change something by bandmates. And, you know, like uh, when, it's, when it's overwhelming, you know, if like three or four people are saying like, we don't like this, then you kind of have to listen to that. Um, I think when I was younger, I used to put up more of a fight and now I just want what's best for the whole, you know. I think the strengths and weaknesses that I have as a musician are kind of interconnected because I think uh, I will work on an idea 
relentlessly until it's done, sometimes to the detriment of my sanity. Um, like I know there was one song on a record we did called Go that took me eight revisions and I think even different melodies. And like we actually recorded the song once and then before we put it out, I went and rewrote it again uh, at the urging that it was too disturbing to put out as is and we needed a more friendly, I think it was a little too far on the, like it was disgusting, but it, 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 I liked it, but it was, I think even my wife agrees that it was disgusting. And it, it just, so we kind of PG-13'd it a little bit and made it less disgusting. It's still embarrassing and, uh, embarrassing in that it's so um, um, autobiographical and honest. I shouldn't say embarrassing, but that's, it's just like, it's like, holy shit, this is like out there. But, um, but I think it's what it needed to be. It sort of took over the social media stuff for the band. Like nobody was really running it for years. Like it just wasn't something that we did. And then in the last few years, I've been, you know, I'd say mostly responsible for responding to everyone that writes to us. And, and I've noticed like a lot of um, messages about how our music has helped people in different ways. And I guess to me, that's a very happy side effect. Um, is that the right word, side effect? Of, of what we're doing. Like, I don't think that was ever the intention. I think the intention was just to write songs and I just happened to write, you know, I sort of joke that my lack of imagination is why I just write songs about things that I do or have gone through or think, you know. But uh, I think that it, it, it is a happy side effect that other people are helped by those things. And it's, it's like a weird thing when somebody comes up and says like, oh, I can relate to your stuff because I feel like it's good. On the one hand, it's good to, to have, because sometimes that's, all you need is just to be able to relate to someone else or go, oh, this person's going through it too, I'll be okay. And I know that it's very simple, but sometimes that's all you need. And then on the other half, I'm like, I feel terrible for you because I know what it was like to do this or to go through this, and I hate that, you know, other people have to do that as well. I think thinking that you have any control over anything in life, um, I think that that's a, a falsehood uh, and that I think once, yeah, I don't know. I mean, just getting to the point where you can experience things as they're happening. Um, I don't know if this is making any sense, but that's just kind of where I'm at. It's like, I'm just trying to have a human experience uh, in the moment and not worry about a future I have no control over or a past I can do nothing about. And it is very freeing, but it's very hard to do because I think my mind's always like racing and I'm thinking of all the projects I want to do and all the things I want to do. But, you know, it's very hard to live in the moment when you're always thinking about the future. I work a lot better when I have time to think things out and write it out. Um, but when I have to make things up on the spot, which I think is, is, is a much more honest way of being, it's just hard because I don't, the words don't come to me quickly um, and so I've been trying to just be in the moment more I got to see the promise ring play a few years ago and I also got to see archers of loaf play a few years ago and I recorded like a couple songs on my phone other than those two bands that I mentioned out of like five years of seeing shows I think those are the only two where I whipped out my phone and recorded a song but other than that, I like, I just personally like to, you know, I've been trying to get to this place where I live in the moment. I think that's part of it too, is like, this is, this is an experience that you're having and then it's gone. And I think part of the relationship of having that experience is letting it go and thinking about it and trying to remember what it was like. I think sometime around like the late 80s to mid 90s, that's, that's the kind of music that um, for better or for worse, that's what I was into, and that music still stays with me, and that's something I go back to a lot. And I think from like somewhere around 96, 97 until now, I, I just have not been hit 
in that same way that music hit me when I was a teenager. And I think that's the same for everybody. I think there's like, they've got their like, the stuff that they were into as a teenager for better or for worse, even if it's terrible, like it still has a really good place in their heart. I, I think like when I started playing music was like 1997. So I think when we started writing songs and playing music, especially in this band, um, I just, I didn't listen to as much music because I was writing it, you know? Uh, and then, um, I think just like recently, there's like a handful of bands in the last few years that I've really gotten into, and I'm just gonna name them because I think they're brilliant and I think everyone should check them out. One is The Joy Formidable, um, uh, Lemuria, Los Campesinos, and Speedy Ortiz. I'd say those are like my four favorite bands at the moment. Maybe I'm just more selective about the music I listen to, like things just don't blow me away like they used to. Or, you know, styles change too. So that's another thing. I've been told by my parents that I used to listen to all of their records when I was like two years old, three years old. I put on the headphones and I'd actually, you know, work the record player and I'd listen to bands like The Beatles and The Doors and Led Zeppelin and, and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't really remember that. But I'm sure that had an effect on me. My parents always listen to music. I like to listen to stuff. I don't collect anything. Uh, wait, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I just, personally, I don't understand not using something that you have. Um, so if I buy records, I play them, and if they get ruined, then they're done, or I get new ones, you know? But, and also, like, the sound, like, I don't know. I just, there's something about records that I like the sound of them. Um, I've been thinking about this, too, that it's, you know, with a physical thing such as a record, you know, you have to, there's a relationship between that where you have to flip it you know, and it's it's more of an active way of listening to music uh, as opposed to putting music on and doing something else. And especially if you listen to seven inches, then it's like you have like, you know, a minute and a half to three minutes to, you know, do that. And that's something I haven't done as much of that in the last few years as I used to, but I used to just sit and listen to music. And, you know, luckily most of the records come with uh, an MP3 or something uh, or a download card and then I can throw that on my phone um, to listen to when I'm not at home, when I'm on tour. The most important thing is that if people, is for the people to get your music. Like I'm grateful that people are interested enough to want to listen to it, you know. It would be great to get them interested enough to want to pay for it, um, but I don't know how to do that other than I go out and I buy everything I listen to because I can't ask people to buy my music if I'm not doing that. And I, the only thing I can hope is that, you know, whatever, uh, you just kind of lead by example. Or just like be more selective about the music you listen to. Like go, these are the 10 bands I love, I'm gonna buy their shit, you know. That's pretty simple. Less and less money is being made off of the music that you're making, and more of the money is being made off of like the t-shirts you sell, or the shows you play, or all of the other things around it. And I just, I find that it's, it's, it's just the way it is now. So I don't know what that means, but when I think about it, I'm like, that's so strange. That it's like all the other stuff aside from the music is how you know, bands like us survive. And in, in terms of like the streaming services, I don't really know what the answer is, but I think that you know, um, a lot of people are making a lot of money off of advertising and um, none of those people are the bands. I don't think it's about making shitloads of money. I think it's just making, uh, I guess, I don't know, which is like the basic, basic rate would be awesome. That would be a great thing to get to, you know? Just like a, like a, a minimum wage band rate. That would be great. It sucks to be, to be honest, to be put into a position where I feel like I'm, I'm whining or bitching about something. I'm fucking lucky to be here where I am and to have done this for so many years and to call it, like, that's my job. That's pretty cool. So, you know, to complain about it seems silly. No matter what, like, whatever happens in the future, like, I will probably always be making music, whether or not there's, you know, five people that want to hear it or, you know, 500 or whatever. Um, I think I will always make music. It's just, I think you have to figure out a way to make it um, you know, it just may not be what I do for a living. I may do something else for a living and then make music on the side, you know?